Hello, my friend. Welcome to live chat. This is going to be a fun, lighthearted one. We had some like deep stories and what's up in makeup today. We had some, some things happening where it's like, ah, like <laughs> so that we do something really fun and lighthearted and happy today. Today, we're talking about eyeshadow and whether if we wear eyeshadow, does that make us old ladies? Does it make us look old or old Ben or, you know, just look old? <laughs> Not gender specific. Does it make us look old uh, when we wear eyeshadow? And we're going to discuss that topic. This is all based on a Nylon magazine article that I read last week, actually. And I was going to make it live chat last week, but then I wanted to talk about something else. So I saved it for this week. And it's it's <laughs> it's a fun article. There's a couple of TikToks we're going to watch uh, that go along with it. And this works great for people that don't have TikTok because you don't have to log in and you're going to you're going to see them. So uh, there's there's. <laughs> It's it's just fun. It's fun. But at the same time, you know, we all know that trends change. You know, they do. And, you know, we've we've all seen somebody somewhere. We've looked at them and said, you know what? They did not change with the times, whether it was a hair choice or a clothing choice or a makeup choice. And I think at least for me, I can only speak for myself, is I don't want to be so like I will totally like go with the changes, but I do like to keep like certain things for myself. You know, sometimes I care and sometimes I don't. Uh, but it is good to be aware and make a conscious choice to not go with the trends. <laughs> so we will see. I'm curious to hear what you all have to say. I purposely did my eyeshadow today so that it was more 2024 trying not to look like an old lady. I am. You know what, y'all? I am 45 years old. I am about to turn 46 in June. So I can't say about. I'm holding March, April, three, three months. I'll be 46. And, you know, there's that song, I still remember when 30 was old. And I I think of that song every year <laughs> because I remember when I turned 30 and I was like, that song, like, yeah, I remember when 30 was old. But then you just keep getting older and it's like, that was 15 years ago. <laughs> and I know that there's some of you watching that are older than I am. And you can attest to this, that it just, it, you know, you just keep getting older. It's just the way that it is. And there's something in our society about, you know, especially with younger people having like a superiority that young people are the, are the superior of us. And that once you get old, once you get older, you're less valuable and you're less, amazing and you're you're not as cool when you get older but i think we need to revolt against that i i think that we can band together and say absolutely freaking not we are still cool and it doesn't matter what our eyeshadow looks like <laughs> we are still cool because we know a lot and if younger people take a minute to just listen to what we have to say then maybe they'll learn a little something and won't have to go through some of the same things that we went through uh but that's a little deeper than i intended to go in the intro so i'm going to stop <laughs> even further ADHD brain um you know I, I'm gonna stop before I go any further and let's say hello very quickly to the people that are here live in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness they are here live helping us talk about this topic uh they are the 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 stars of the show uh the people that are here live they're gonna um help us continue this conversation kind of bring our thinking to new places so let's say hello to them before we get into the topic hello Teresa uh Teresa is one of our moderators thank you for being here Teresa, every single week. I appreciate you. I'm sure Flory is floating around somewhere too. Thank you, Flory, for being here, uh, for being our moderators. Thank you to Steph and Audra as well for being our moderators. Uh, and I'm not sure if John's tuning in. He's probably not. Uh, he's probably busy doing his own thing. <laughs> but that's okay because we have Flory and we have Teresa, we have Audra and Steph to keep us having a nice, happy, safe place. And honestly, like for the most part, y'all here every week, we don't get a lot of creepers in here right? like we used to. We used to get a lot of weird people in here and a lot of mean people. And there was always a lot of conflict and ah, and it's like, it's chill now. Like <laughs> our moderators are amazing. So thank you for, um, for doing that. I really appreciate keeping this a nice safe place for us just in case we happen to get something happening. I, I don't think it's going to happen today. I don't think so. That's my prediction. There's no wood for me to knock on. All right. Jilly Mac. Hi, Jilly Mac. So good to see you. Hello, Dawn. Good morning to you. Hi, Roya. Good morning. Good morning, Jennifer. Happy Sunday. Raining in Louisiana. I will be in New Orleans in two weeks, 
three weeks. We're doing creators and friends. So speaking of that, uh, I'm going to get my calendar out so, so I can look. So not next Sunday. Next Sunday is we're good. The following Sunday is Easter Sunday. So we will not have live chat. We will have what's up in makeup, but no live chat on Easter Sunday. The following Sunday is when I will be uh, not there would be no blood to make up. There will be no live chat because I am spending most of that week in New Orleans with creators and friends with about 30 of your favorite creators. Uh, it is a trip for people. Um, we we go and we network and we hang out. Um, it's the people that are, um, you know, we, we want to go on on trips together. <laughs> We want to we want to get to know each other. We want to network. Uh, there's going to be an opportunity for us to film together. Uh, you'll see a bunch of posts on Instagram. It's a really great group of people. We went uh, to Charleston, uh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine months ago, and we had a fantastic time. But our group is growing. You're going to see some new faces uh, in the uh, the posts when we post about the trip. So uh, it's very very exciting, and I cannot wait to be in Louisiana. Everybody's talking about going to Cafe Du Monde and getting some coffee and some beignets. And, you know, I don't know if we're all going to be able to go together as a group because it's a big group. And when I went with my family of four, it was really hard to get a table. So, <laughs> so I don't know if we're all going to be able to go together. If we're going to have to go in pieces, but I will go to Cafe Du Monde and at least get some beignets. Even if I just walk up, grab some beignets. I don't know if they allow you to do that. Just get beignets to go. I don't know, but I definitely want some. I've been craving them ever since. Anyway, again, the tangents, the tangents. Lupe, good morning to you. Move on, Jen, move on. Uh, Teresa says, don't forget to like and share. Let's all help Jen out. Thank you for that reminder, Teresa. It really does help. Carrie, good morning to you. Good morning to Miss Lavender. Happy to see you. Jilly Mac says, if, I, if eyeshadow makes me an old lady, I don't want to be young. And that is where we're going to start our chat. That is a good place to start. So I'm going to go ahead, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and I know, craving, uh, Jennifer's craving a beignet now, I know, right? So that'll be two weeks in a row we won't have live chat, um, and just one week of not having what's up in makeup, but then that's going to happen again in May as well, but we'll talk about that when it gets a little bit closer. So let's go into this article. Uh, I am going to do, I'm going to make me really small because I want you to be able to see the article and it is linked down below. So I do have to click on a new window. Let me see if I can drag this window so I don't have to lose the chat. See, but I think that makes, oh, that actually makes yours looks pretty nice. I'm still getting used to using these, um, the way that this software works. Let me open that. Oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. Hold on. Hang tight. Okay, so we're going to do this, and y'all are just a little bit smaller. Okay, we're good. I'm just going to move this up a little. Okay, so Nylon put out this this um, this article, and it is written by Sam Niebert. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And it says, is eyeshadow an old lady thing? And there's a picture of a younger person. Um, she looks like she's a millennial to me, possibly. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, she's blowing a, a bubble gum, big, huge bubble, and she's got... Uh, light, like green, like a almost like a light forest green eyeshadow on. It says Nylon's beauty editor weighs in on the Gen Z millennial divide when it comes to going out makeup. Okay, here is the article, and I'm just going to read it to you in case you're listening, and then we'll comment as we go. I'm not normally one to fear the churn of the trend cycle. If someone wants to bring back low rise jeans and flared yoga pants, let them. But recently, I learned that my attitude wasn't quite so casual when I was hit with a paralyzing paradigm shift, beauty revelation. We are apparently facing the potential end of eyeshadow. As a beauty editor, I feel like I'm the last one to find out that eyeshadow is allegedly over. The first sign was when I was recently at the Spaniard in the West Village, where the crowd generally falls on the south side of the millennial Gen Z cusp. I was wearing a full-on shimmery mint green eye, courtesy of a gorgeous Pat McGrath Labs palette, but I couldn't help but notice that everywhere I looked, there were only very bare lids. Soon after, I was served a now viral TikTok video in which creator Jennifer Lynch says her daughter, quote, just told me that eyeshadow is a Gen Z millennial thing, aka, AKA an old lady thing. The surrounding discussion is tellingly only millennials in an up. Wait, the surrounding discussion is tellingly. I'm think, I think I think it's saying putting millennials in an uproar or offering ways to mod. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm, my comprehension's off. The surrounding discussion is tellingly 
only millennials in an uproar or offering ways to modernize their application based on the shocking information. Hopefully I read that correctly. For some reason, my comprehension was off. Okay, so we're going to take a little break from the article and we're going to go over and watch the TikTok that she's talking about. Here it is. My daughter just told me that eyeshadow is a Gen X and millennial thing, <laughs> AKA an old lady thing. Is that true? Is that true? Okay, that's it. That's the whole thing. And then the other one that I'm going to show you is only about a minute and 41 seconds, but it's cute. So that that TikTok did uh, blow up, and I think it's because of the conversation. Uh, let me go ahead and pull me up a little bit bigger, and I want to see what you all are saying in the comments. Uh, let's see. <laughs> AK says, Nylon is still around. I always considered that mag fashion edgelord. Yeah, I, I actually look at Nylon every single week for articles for What's Up in Makeup. Apparently, Elizabeth G made a good point. Let's see what she's saying. At the rate that the rate new palettes are released, old ladies must be a huge market, LOL. I mean, good point. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. Lupe says, so what about all these young millennials doing beauty channels that include eyeshadow palettes? See, that's what they're saying is that millennials are no longer cool. They're no longer the hip young generation, right? Do you remember Lupe? And those of you that are in Gen X or boomers, like boomers remember probably when Gen X was the new hip generation in the nineties and the early two thousands, right? And then I remember when millennial pink was like huge and the new hip generation were millennials. You know, they were in their early 20s, new and hip, and everyone was trying to cater to millennials, right? This wasn't that long ago. I was doing What's Up in Makeup when we were catering to millennials. And now millennials are starting to feel the we're not the cool kids anymore vibe. It's Gen Z. The older Gen Z are now moving into their 20s. And uh, you're starting to feel what boomers felt with us and what Gen X felt with millennials. So I think that, um, that that's what they're saying is that Gen Z isn't buying in to the eyeshadows. And I think a lot of that just has to do with how hard we hit eyeshadow in 2016, 2017, 2018, even 2019, as far as the bright, bold, eyeshadow looks. And I think that, that the way that trends swing is it's always, you know, you hit hard this way and then you hit hard the exact opposite way. It makes perfect sense. Um, so yeah, it, uh, Lupe says, what about these young millennials doing beauty channels that include eyeshadow palettes? This is what I'm wondering, Lupe, is it going to change? Are the young millennials going to continue using eyeshadow palettes or are their eyes going to start looking more like mine or even less? with a very natural eye look. Uh, <laughs> Mari says, oh no, I just bought three new palettes. I'm older though, so there's that. And, and this is the thing is I personally am not trying to discourage anybody from doing anything. I just found this fascinating. And you will see me in the future with, with brighter eyeshadow. I don't, I don't Angie Nukvist it. I don't, I don't have the talent or the skill to do the really bright, bold eyeshadows. So you've probably not really seen me in those because I honestly, I can't really do them very well. But, um, but with colors, I'm not going to stop wearing colors. I'm not going to stop wearing shimmers. I'm not going to stop wearing foils. So just so you know, I'm not trying to shame anybody for wearing brighter, bolder eyeshadow looks the opposite. I just want to discuss. <laughs> so I don't want anybody to feel bad. Please don't feel bad. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. Yeah. Makeup or breakup blog. Any, again, anything over 25 is considered old pretty much, pretty much. And that's where Gen Z is. What's, what's the age range oldest? Gen Z's. I think they're 25. They were born in 1996, making them 12 to 27 years old. Wow. So, that, I mean, they're, of course. But I think it's because we think about the 12-year-olds. Like, Phoenix is a Gen Z. So, it's like, I think of, you know, my 15-year-old. But there are a lot of older Gen Z's. There's, you're probably, there are probably Gen Z's watching right now that are like, yeah, you know, of course we're cool. <laughs> Yes, definitely. All right, let's get back to this article. Okay, let me uh, blow it up, bloop, and go back to my article. Okay, here we go. I love all makeup, but I love eyeshadow the most. It's by far the, mo the makeup I get the most compliments on. 
perhaps from millennials, but still. And for as long as I can remember applying powdered pigments to your eyelids, especially of the smoky, colorful, or glittery variety, has always equaled fun. It signifies getting dressed up and going out. We were taught in the aughts and 2010s. Good skin is nice, sure, but it's not the centerpiece of a look. Lipstick is cool, but it's prone to smudging and coming off on the rims of glasses. Eyeshadow, in comparison, is pretty, draws attention to your gaze, generally stays in place, and says, I'm here to have a good time. Sometimes the best part of the night is getting ready with your friends, listening to music, and blending out dark eyeshadow in the outer corner of your eyes. How could we have strayed so far from the light? <laughs> See how well this is written? I love it. To confirm the chilling news, I accessed my own Gen Z data bank, my 21-year-old cousin. If I, This is what she says in quotes. If I saw Smokey Eye, I would think they are definitely older, she says, though she adds that she has nothing against them, probably to soothe me. I might wear it if someone was doing it for me. If, I might wear it if someone was doing it for me for an occasion, but it's just a lot of work for just going out. Her prefer, I mean, fair. <laughs> Her preferred nighttime look, she says, is dewy and clean. Maybe some eyeliner, but at most, a little bronzer swept across her eyelids. All her friends subscribe to the less is more approach Sophia Richie Grange and Alex Earl have popularized. And then there's a picture of the two of them with uh, that that um, no makeup makeup look. Um, I think Alex has a little bit more because she has some eyeliner on and her brows are a bit more strong. Her brows in this picture are more uh, Instagram brows. Uh, she, yeah, but they're basically just natural and glowy looking. All right, let's go over to the community and see what y'all are saying. Let's take a little pause. Bloop. Okay. Oh, five gifts. Priscilla gifting memberships. Thank you so much, Priscilla. This is not the first time Priscilla's gifted memberships. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships. That's so kind of you. There you are. Thank you so much. Yeah, Lisa says, I'm 56 and I still wear eyeshadow, as you should, Lisa, as you should. Elizabeth says, I'm an attorney, so I mostly try for neutrals and minimal. I look for work. I have fun with it on weekends and when I'm going out. And I think even in like the height of the bright, bold eyeshadows in, you know, maybe 2017, I think in a professional setting, like as an attorney, I don't know if those ever made it in there. And honestly, I'm going to be 100% with you. If I went to the mall during that time, I usually had the most eyeshadow on of people in my area. I think it was a lot of, you know, certain areas maybe have picked up on those trends, at least in the U.S. I don't know how it is around the world, but at least here, I felt like they're really like you would see it, but rarely. And it's like I even last year when I was at the farmer's markets, whenever I saw someone with a full beat, chances are they were a subscriber of mine. <laughs> <laughs> chances are like whenever I'd like really and truly the net, I would see someone walk by in a full beat. And the next thing I knew they would be coming up to being me and saying, hi, it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> so I really do think that like the really bright, bold looks didn't necessarily happen across like overall as a, a takeover of all people wearing makeup. I think that we really captured that in the beauty space and didn't it didn't necessarily translate to professional places like Elizabeth is saying. Adele says, ha ha, why do I find this so funny about Gen Z and millennials? I have two kid, two Gen Z kids and they definitely think they're the cool generation and they will learn when the Gen Alphas become the cool generation, they will learn. We all do. The boomers are laughing at me. <laughs> because they've been through this multiple times at this point. Tiffany says, "My Gen, uh, I'm Gen X. My oldest is 28. My youngest is 26. Wow, you had kids young. Oh, unless well, you you're, I, you might be older than me too. See, I'm thinking you're we're exactly the same age, like all Gen X. But I'm I forget sometimes I'm a younger Gen X." Perky Perkins, I'm the oldest in my office and typically my younger employees come and ask me for makeup application advice. Oh, and you know, that's because you're very talented. I, I would, I'm not surprised. I feel honored since I know styles are different between the generations. Yeah, and we're gonna see in just a minute, uh, there's a TikTok that I wanna play for you that's cited in this article that talks about ways to change your makeup a little bit to, Still put on eyeshadow, but without being as bold if you would like to. 
Dark Angel says, it's just that girl's preference. I just bought my niece a natural pal for Christmas and her birthday. She's 12. She loves eyeshadow, but the girl in the video acted way more immature than most. Yeah, well, I mean, she's young. <laughs> it makes sense. All right. ES says, I work with Gen Z ladies, and yep, no makeup except maybe eyebrows and mascara, but they all have gorgeous skin to focus on. Yeah, because that's what, you know, that's what's trendy. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Julie says, I remember how we made fun of the 70s and early 80s about the old women wearing baby blue eyeshadow. Yes. And then for, for us, it was the 90s hair with the poof, how we used to do the poof. There are still a lot of people that do the poof. Got more power to you. If you want wings and a poof, more power to you. Do your own thing. Yeah, Mari says, to be fair, since the pandemic, I've worn less and less makeup, especially eyeshadow, but I have a problem. I'm addicted to pretty palettes, yeah. Same. Hashtag same. <laughs> Whenever I do hashtag anything, my kids cringe so hard. <laughs> makeup or breakup, breakup blog. After COVID, I think people pared down the strong makeup look. The trend is now natural and glowy skin. Very true. And I think we're in, like, the meat of it now. You know, when trends start kind of creeping in, you know, they started creeping in in 2020 and 2021. I feel like we're in like the middle of it right now, the natural glowy skin uh, trend. Kirsten says, less is more is not a bad concept, but I, when I go glam, I really gl go glam as you should, as you should. And then Bree says, I have a few palettes, but prefer cream shadows. They last longer on my crepey lids and they're easier for me to blend. Nice. That's good to know. I don't have a lot of cream shadows that I've been using. I really need to start using them more. All right, let's go back to the article because I want to get to the part where we show the video. All right. Scrolling down. Mentally, I wonder where the fun is gone. But as we talk, I start to get it. Part of the appeal is the perceived breeziness. If your day and night looks are one and the same, you don't need to get ready because you are ready. But maybe the bigger reason is that the way we live has become so drastically different that the very idea of separation in the day is now outdated. This is very interesting. Okay. I'm trying to find where that, oh, did I miss the article? The other one? Where did I miss? I think I missed the, the thing. Oh, it was way up here. This was where the video was. Okay. So before we get into the um, the differences between the way we saw day and night makeup and the way that people are seeing day and night makeup back then, let me go ahead and show you the, um, the TikTok I wanted to show you that was cited. And I just missed, I just skipped right over it because it's interesting. I want to get a different screen up though for this because it's a little distracting with the people. Let's just get some words up there. Okay, here we go. So my daughter just told me that eyeshadow is a Gen X and millennial thing, <laughs> aka an old lady thing. Okay, friends, so here's the hard truth. We can still do shadow. I've been tagged, but we can't do this. You know it well. The light, the dark, the light, okay? Then the black around the eye, okay? And the taupe with more taupe and the V the dreaded V. That is what dates us. Instead, let's do a more modern take okay which i call like a sunrise or the lift over the river through the hood right so this is like a rose gold this is by colfi it doesn't have to be this but something similar to give a more lively vibe versus the taupe with the more taupe okay this one shadow up and then i traded in the black liner for the makeup forever bronze liner where we still get detail, but it is a lot softer, easy to blend, and we did more of a lift versus a V instead of the inside of the eye. I went a little on the outside to meet the end and give us more lift. This is more forgiving, especially if you have hoods or a little bit more texture over here. You just kind of smudge it out. So basically, it's two products, a nice rose gold shadow, a smudge around the eye, and mascara, and over the river, through the hood, we have a lift, okay? This, we're losing real estate. It's like, where's Waldo? Also, the brow, just bring that into the picture. Instead of just filling it this way, I took the brow and filled it more this way to give a little more extension with the eye, just more of a modern vibe, so we can do shadow. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Okay, guys? Let's go. I mean, was that cute or what? 
Wasn't that the cutest thing ever? By the way, both of these TikTok uh, accounts are down below. If you did not notice while she was talking, because she's amazing, I sneezed four times <laughs> during that for some reason. So I'm so glad that was playing. Like she saved me. <laughs> but we're good now. I think we're good. Okay. So, but yeah, dude, wasn't that cute? I thought that she did such a good job. I loved Over the River and Through the Hood. And also, um, I can do any, was it the Brian Adams song, but I won't do that. So freaking funny. Anyway, let me go over to you all because that is worth uh, clicking on some comments, I think. Uh, Kimberly says, 58-year-old substitute teacher here. I wear colorful looks all the time, and the kids comment on how much they like it. Boys and girls, this is BS. Yes, and when I was teaching, excuse me, I used to get a lot of compliments on it too. And, you know, I, I think that people of all ages appreciate good art, you know, and it, I don't know if – like I think that it, that sometimes it's about complimenting the art of it. And I think that's where this is coming from is that we can, that, that the art is separate, I think, from the trend. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, Kimberly. I don't know. I mean, it, maybe it'll come back. This is the thing is it always swings back. It always swings back. And I think, you know, with the eighties, with like we were saying a minute ago with the bright blue eyeshadows and things, you know, that went out of trend. And in the nineties, we had that grungy look where nobody was wearing bright, bold colors, right? And then we get into the two, late 2000s or you know 2010s and we're back into bright and bold. So this is kind of our swing back, the way we swing swung in the 90s where it was more like subdued grays and stuff like that. Of course, it's different because we're, you know, that was more about, I think, about the lips than it was about the eyes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to swing back. It's going to swing back. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, exactly, Roya. Next generation eyeshadows will be back strong. Definitely. It just, you know, it's just the way things go. Tiffany says, here, now I remember my teenage self asking if the goal is to make it look like you're not wearing makeup, then what's the point? Yes. <laughs> But things are changing. Things are changing. I think it's just to enhance the features. And for now, it's all about the glow. It's all about the glowy skin. Jilly says, my makeup and skincare routine is my favorite part of the morning. I'm not giving up the eyeshadow, as you shouldn't. I think that everybody needs to do what makes them happy. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think that's what really what it comes down to with this. But I think that the article presents it in a unique way that I'm really enjoying. Julie says, oh, oh, I watch her all the time. She's one of the only beauty content creators that I watch on YouTube. Oh, is she on YouTube? Oh, very cool. I'll have to link her YouTube channel uh, down in the um, the description box afterward. I'll have to find her. Uh, it, her TikTok is currently in the description box, but not the YouTube. So I'll have to add that later. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie Nell says, I mean, she's not wrong. That looks so pretty. It did look pretty. It did. It really did. Uh, I don't have her name in front of me right now, but if you look in the description box, it's there. Actually, you know what? I can find it. Let me find it. Her name is, I just have to go to a different window. Her name is Erica Taylor. Uh, let me see. Let me, I'm cop let me put Erica Taylor in, into YouTube and see if I can find her. Erica Taylor. Okay. Erica Taylor Beauty. She has 9,700, uh, 9,760 9, subscribers, but it looks like she's just putting up shorts. That kind of stinks. I mean, but, but the thing is, no, it doesn't stink. You know what? It doesn't. I, I take that back a hundred percent. If you are not on TikTok, if you don't want to download TikTok, then this is where you can see all of her TikToks without having to go there. So let me go ahead and add this to the description. Uh, da, da, da. Erica's uh, YouTube. Oh, I can't spell apparently. Okay, and I'm hitting save. So if you refresh it, it it'll be there. There we go. But it is just all of her TikToks, which is totally fine, especially for people that are not on TikTok. All right. Christy says both are beautiful. I think it's all about what makes you feel like you look your best. I do my makeup for me. I'm not trying to seek approval from others. Yay! 
I love that, Christy. Thank you for that message because that is very important. And I love the way you articulated that. Love that. Becca, I think current eye makeup is about looking as effortless as possible, whether it actually is effortless or not. Yeah, there you go. Love that. Kirsten, we'll go back to the everyday color under the sun eyes eventually. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. So we just need to save our palettes for the next 20 years. <laughs> and then we'll be, you know, we'll be super trendy again. But but again, like it's it's all about what makes you happy. I love that. Very true. Uh, Sarita, totally unrelated, but it's such a privilege to see y'all and be around people I recognize and get to interact with this community. Sarita, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for being here. That is a really sweet thing to say. Thank you. Uh, Christy, my sons are 15 and 17. I'm that mom that the kids flock to. I think the kids feel like they can relate better and it actually makes me more approachable. And for that, I'm grateful. You know, I've always wanted to be the cool mom. Like that was my goal is to be the cool mom. And you know, Phoenix just doesn't bring their friends around me. <laughs> We just, they just don't, they just don't bring the friends over. So therefore, and then John's friends, they're, you know, 12 and 13 year old boys. They don't care. <laughs> it's like basically all my kids' friends just completely ignore me. Totally. I'm not, I'm definitely not the cool mom. Nope. Maybe one day, maybe one day. <laughs> Yes, exactly, Dark Angel, that TikTok could be going away soon anyway, so there's that. And if you're interested in that story, we did talk about that in What's Up in Makeup. Um, it's such a nuanced topic. There's so many elements to whether or not TikTok should go away. Um, but it is. it does get political because I talk about presidents, uh, current and former. So if you don't want to hear that, just skip that story. I have a timestamp for you to skip it. Oh, Audra's here. I want to hear what Audra has to say. Audra corrected the word trends. All right, here we go. Hi, Audra. I guess because I'm black, very little of this affects me because trends typically don't include us or other POC. Yeah. You know what? It's because a lot of times trends are set by POC. I think that's what it is. So, yeah. And, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. All right. Uh, so while we're at 31 minutes, let's take a quick little break and let's talk about what's on my face. And then we'll go into the second part of this article, which talks about the difference between day looks and night looks and how we looked at it as, you know, boomers. I don't know if there's anybody from um, what's the generation before boomers, the something generation, it's like the classic generation and the, the amazing generation or something, the best generation. I don't know what it is, but for gen boomers, Gen X, millennials. Um, how we thought about day and night looks versus how Gen Z is looking at night, a day and night looks. Uh, all right, so eyeshadow. Today, I am using the Alter Ego Midsummer Palette. I've been reaching for this a lot lately. Uh, this is the color story. This was sent in PR. Uh, I believe it is very similar to an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Uh, I really love uh, this color story, and the quality is absolutely fantastic. The blush I'm wearing today, this is purchased by LYS. This is Higher Standard by LYS, and it's just like a mauve -y pink kind of shade to kind of match my BK, BH, BK Beauty sweatshirt that I got at the last Creators and Friends event from BK Beauty. Uh, I, this is also purchased. This is from Urban Decay on my lips. This is a Love You Back Talk. It is their liquid lip color. And it's pretty true to what's in the tube, what's on my lips. Again, just kind of going a little more pinky than the mauve on the lips. And then my mascara today, I wanted to mention, even though you can't see it, I can. <laughs> it's actually, it's a pretty nice mascara. I would give it a 7 out of 10. This was set in PR by Smashbox. This is the Christian Cohen version of their super fan, uh, fanned out mascara. Uh, it's it's a good mascara. It's not, not my favorite because I need a lot of help. But if you need a moderate amount of help, this is a good one. Uh, the tube is really heavy, which feels great. I like heavy mascara tubes. And the wand is kind of, um, I don't know, what do you call that? I'm trying to see it, but also let it focus. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. What kind of what kind of what can we call that? It's it's thinner at the top, then it gets bigger, and then thinner at the bottom, uh, with no little wigglies in the middle. I don't know what you call that, but uh, very much enjoying that mascara, even though it doesn't quite give me the uh, the oomph that I um, that I like from some of my other mascaras. I do have a rare beauty sweatshirt, Melissa, that is very similar to this. It's the same tone, but it has a hood on it. Uh, this one is BK Beauty. 
very similar. All right. Oh my goodness, Leah, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. That is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Very, very sweet of you. So all of those people now have access to uh, the live streams that we've done. And also I've been uploading my Friday videos early whenever I can so you can get first crack at them. I also want to mention very quickly before we move on, my collaboration candle with Candles by Victoria is still available. Uh, I don't, we should probably have it available probably forever, but our collaboration, I'm not sure how long uh, my affiliate link is going to work. <laughs> So I figured I would mention it just in case you were still interested or if you hadn't seen it. It is called Coffee with Friends. It's actually dedicated to live chat. That is the whole um, basis for the development of this candle. So it is coffee and uh, salty caramel scented. And I will show you up close what it looks like. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful. Victoria knocked it out of the park with this candle. Uh, she has so many things over there. If you've never been over to her website, go over and just check it out uh, because it really is such a... Uh, 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 a comparison. I accidentally clicked on Erica Taylor's video. I was going to um, put the link down below, my affiliate link for that, but I need to find it. Um, but she has so many things. I love the car scents. The car scents are amazing. Um, they're like little bottles. And what I do is I take the, the little stopper out of the bottle and I get as much scent as I need. And then I put the stopper back in because usually it's too strong and it makes it last for Ever. these car scents you know the like the paper ones that last like a week and then they're done or the little ones you put in your in your friggin vents or whatever and they last for like two weeks and they're done like I love her car scents they're amazing let me um copy and paste and then if you bloop bloop and then if you want to um of course you can go directly there and then I won't get commission which is fine <laughs> it's fine it's just fine um and it it's um, okay. I'm putting it underneath. Okay. No, but if you want to just go there, you absolutely can. I just won't get commission, which is fine. <laughs> but I want commission. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Not kidding. Okay. <laughs> so yes, this is still, this is available. Um, if you were like coffee scents, but she has so many other scents over there from floral scents to masculine scents to soft scents to um, vanilla kinds of gourmand scents, um, bakery scents, anything that you could possibly want. All right. Yes. And I love this. Let's, let's use this to get back into our topic. So Elizabeth says old is not a bad word. We've earned our ages. And I feel like, in, oops, I didn't mean to click on Julie. I'll, I'll go back to Julie in a second. I, I think that in our culture, in American culture, um, and in a lot of cultures that are, you know, geographically close to us that being old is considered not a good thing, which is really sad because there are people that we we once you get to a certain age you realize how much more you know than people that are younger because you've been there because you've seen it you know one thing that i tweeted yesterday is you know i've, I've watched you know you kind of sit back and you look at people's behavior and you see people just being pretentious you know and arrogant and you know you you look back and you see these you see these people that, that are just you know, not being kind or having self being self-conscious of certain things and then acting out because they have lower self-esteem. And it's like, you know what? Like that is, it's just, you know, they just haven't gotten there yet. Like instead of being mad about it, I'm just, you know, they just haven't gotten there yet. And hopefully one day they'll learn that thinking you're better than somebody or, you know, um, you know, just not treating somebody well because you're, you feel superior or you feel that need to feel superior is just not, it's not necessary. It's, it's really not. And once you find your ground and you find that confidence in yourself, you don't feel the need to pull other people down. Like I've seen, you know, some people do, and I'm sure I've done it, you know, I mean, I'm like, I'm sure if we've all done it at some point or another, but I think as you get older, you start noticing some of those behaviors that maybe you had when you were younger that you've grown out of. Um, and you just kind of were like, Oh, isn't that sweet? You know, <laughs> hopefully they get there one day as well. You know, we all are just learning the same lessons over and over and over again through the generations. 
Uh, Julie says, I'm pretty sure I use the link. I hope you get the commissions, but I'm really looking forward to the candle. I love coffee set. Oh, yay. Well, I'm glad that you got it. And this is the thing is like when I collaborated with uh, Cocoa and Soy, when I'm collaborating with Candles by Victoria, a big part of that is just supporting small business. I, you know, I'm the one who reached out to Cocoa and Soy. I'm the one who reached out to Candles by Victoria because I love those companies so much and I want to support them. I want to bring them business because not only is it, you know, about bringing initial business, but also repeat customers. You know, when you've got a beautiful, you know, acai bowl sitting on your counter and you've got people coming over and they're like, oh my gosh, that's, what is that? Oh, it's my candle. Oh, what is that? Where'd you get it? And candles by Victoria. And like, then maybe they'll be a customer. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like just helping small businesses grow because it's hard out there, man. It is rough out there. So that's, that's also a huge motivation. So even if I don't get commission on it, it's fine because it's supporting Victoria and I just adore her. I think she's a lovely human from what I know of her. Um, we're, you know, I know her through a business relationship, but she seems like a very lovely human. And that pineapple scent really hit me when I pulled this one over. I smelled that pineapple so strong. It's like, I just want to put my face in it and just keep it here. It smells so good. Oh, by the way, people were asking about the acai bowls, saying that, you know, coconut can be flammable, um, coconut shells, but you can treat them. And these are all treated. They're specifically um, treated for use with candles. So you don't have to worry about that. I clarified that with Victoria. All right. So let's get back into this article because we only have 20 minutes left because I cannot stop gabbing. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> let's get back in. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh no, what happened? I accidentally clicked on an ad. No, no, none of that. Go away ad, okay. <laughs> Here we go. I love all makeup, but I love eyeshadow the most. It is also by far the makeup I get the most compliments on, perhaps from millennials, but still. And, oh wait, I already read that. Come down here, come down here, Jen. Mentally, I wonder where the fun has gone. But as we talk, I start to get it. Part of the appeal is the perceived breeziness of if your day and night looks are on one and the same, you don't need to get ready because you are ready. But maybe the reason is that the way we live has become so drastically different that the very idea of separation of day, it, separation in the day is now outdated. Millennials grew up going to class in the morning and going out at night. Then as adults, we commuted to offices where at 5 p.m. we throw in a lip or an eye at our desks to meet our friends for drinks. Every women's magazine told us about tweaking our outfits and makeup to go from day to night. But it was also the real structure of our lives. But in the post-COVID era, fewer of us leave the house at 9 a.m. and come back late anymore. Work and free time have all merged into one with the same comfy clothes and unchanging makeup, which some may find freeing, but to me feels monotonous. So while it feels odd to accept that we're no longer the youngest, coolest generation anymore, I can also cherish how I learned about makeup and life the way I did. And yes, to no one's surprise, I for one will be holding on to my eyeshadow, even if Gen Z is now making fun of us for our old lady makeup and wearing the business casual to the club. At least we're going to the club at all. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Sam. <laughs> And that was the article that I wanted to share with you. Um, yeah, I, I just found it. I thought that I really enjoyed the writing. I really enjoyed um, just the style of it. And I think when I sneezed, I made my wing go up too high. Got distracted by my own makeup. <laughs> no, I just really enjoyed the article and I enjoyed that take on it. And it is interesting. You know, it's, it's you think about, you know, how, how one thing can really change the whole trajectory of the world, you know? And, you know, COVID really was one of those things that changed the tra trajectory of the entire world. And we are, like, I would never, like, however many years ago, five, six years ago, go to the grocery store in what I'm wearing today, which is freaking leggings and a sweatshirt. This is my going to the grocery store outfit now is leggings and a sweatshirt. I would never have five years ago because I felt like that was like wearing your pajamas. You know, I know a lot of people did. People always did it forever, whatever. I don't care what other people do. But for me, I felt uncomfortable wearing this kind of clothes to the grocery store. Last week when I was at the grocery store, one of my subscribers, hi, Lauren, if you're here, 
Lauren came up to me and said, are you Jen? And I was like, yeah. And my hair was a mess and I'm wearing, you know, something similar to this. Um, but it was really nice to meet her and it was very fun. But, um, but I felt like I maybe should have looked a little nicer in that moment. But then I realized that, that this is normal to wear leggings and a sweatshirt. That's what everybody's wearing to the grocery store, but it wasn't always like that. And that's kind of my point is that, you know, maybe some people always did, but it's become very mainstream to be more casual, even going into some offices, going to school, you know, going to school in pajamas. Kids go to school in literal pajamas. And I think we've talked about this before. When I was a kid, I accidentally, my dad got me ready for school that day. And I accidentally went to school because what I would, let me rewind the story. My dad was getting me ready for school. Let me tell it in chronological order. Dad was getting me ready. My mom wasn't home for some reason. I don't know why. And I, when I went to go eat my breakfast, I would always put my pants on, put my whatever my jeans were, and then I would wear my nightgown until the very last minute because I loved my nightgowns. And then right before I left for school, I would change out of my nightgown. I put on my regular shirt and I would go to school. Well, my dad was getting me ready, and he didn't realize one paying attention to the fact I was still wearing my nightgown and I wore my nightgown to school. And um, somebody pointed out, they're like, "Are you wearing a nightgown?" It was this girl Tanya. I remember her. Tanya. And Tanya looks at me. She goes, are you, are you wearing a nightgown? And I went, no, no, I'm not wearing a nightgown. And I'm like frantically trying to tuck it in. Right. And she's like, you are wearing a nightgown because I have that nightgown. It's like, you know, caught, but now kids purposely wear pajamas to school purposely because it's all about the casual. So it makes sense. The makeup goes that direction as well. It makes sense, you know? So and Crystal says, you're Jen, you're a real person. You don't have to look nice at the grocery store for subscribers. I know, but I really looked really scrubby. I like was, my hair was not in its best shape. And <laughs> I was like, <"Brr." laughs> but it was fine. It was good. I'm really glad she came up to me. But in the, but this is the thing is, is what I realized when I left was it's like, you know, we're all wearing casual clothes to the grocery store at this point. It's just my, my Gen X brain was like, maybe I should have been more put together, but really I need to just kind of come into 2024 and realize that, you know, we're all, we're all in kind of casual now. It's kind of just the way that it is, right? Yeah. Jenny Lynn, uh, Jenny Lynn says, I'm literally getting ready to go to the grocery store, grocery shopping and leggings and a sweatshirt. I, I love it. I love it. It's my fave. Adele says, I'm so glad in the UK it's school uniform. Yeah. And I, you know, I do see the argument for school uniforms. I definitely do. 100%. You don't have to worry about it. Just get up, put on your uniform, be done with it. In the city, in Baltimore City, they have uniforms. But unless you go to private school uh, in Maryland, at least in, in the counties that I've taught in, it's not uniform unless you go to private school. But in Bal Baltimore City, it is um it is city. I mean, it is uniforms. And I think in DC too, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah, of course. I didn't realize how dependent I'd become on leggings and t-shirts or sweatshirts until I came to Japan and saw how everyone here would be considered overdressed in the States. Wow. That's so interesting. That is so interesting. I've heard Japan is absolutely beautiful and that there's so much to do. Um, my husband, one of my husband's very good friends, his, uh, just got back from Japan. He went with his girlfriend who had to take care of some business in Japan. So they just got back and he was telling us all the stories. Incredible. Sounds absolutely incredible there. And Patricia says, I will never wear pajamas in public, but I have definitely become more casual in what I wear in public since I started working from home. I wear leggings and sweatshirts to Safeway now. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's common. It's very common. So that was pretty much all I wanted to talk about as far as the topic for today is eyeshadow and old lady thing. Um, in, in short, my personal conclusion is probably, um, but also I don't care. <laughs> I think that you should always wear, like we were talking about earlier, wear what makes you happy, wear what makes you comfortable. And if people think it's outdated, then it, that's their business. And that's, you know, what goes on in their life and in their head is their business. We just need to mind ourselves. Right. And if we're happy, then so be it. Right. So be it. I'm going to scroll down quite a bit. So if you guys, if you all want to talk about something else, we totally can, or we can keep talking about this where I'm, I'm going where, where y'all are going. Yeah. says I never learned the full beat look, but I'm looking like Dolly Parton next to these 20 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting how, you know, a full beat can look 
so different from people that don't do that type of makeup. You can really stand out, but I don't see it as a bad thing. Oh, I meant to click on Michael. I'll click on Audra next. Michael says, I think it also comes down to the fact that elder millennials got into makeup when everyone wearing a full beat and all the bright eyeshadow looks. Now Gen Z is about no makeup. Yeah, because they weren't around for, for that boom. Audra says, we had YouTube to teach us how to put on makeup and they don't really watch YouTube. TikTok doesn't do super well for tutorials. I mean, that's a great point. And also the things that they're doing over there are a lot of them are for shock value. You know, you think Meredith Duxbury with, you know, putting on pounds and pounds of foundation. And this is the thing people always say, you know, how it looks beautiful in the end. It's because she's wiped most of it off. <laughs> it's like, naturally, you just can't have that much found. If you put on, this is the trick. Let me tell you the, the Meredith Duxbury trick. Okay. You put on tons and tons of foundation, right? Tons and tons of it. But you can only spread it out so much. It's A lot of that is coming off on her tools. <laughs> it's just coming off on the tools. It's not staying on her face. You can't, it just, it just can't. It's impossible. It's all for shock value. You know, I'm sure that, you know, it looks probably well, pretty cakey in person because, you know, I used to go to all these beauty events and I would see you know, some of these influencers that look gorgeous on camera. When you see them in person, it really does look cakey. Like it really, it really does. It looks gorgeous on camera, but in person, it really does look like too much. Um, at least the 2016, 2017, um, those particular influencers at those particular events. Um, so, I mean, but that's their jam. They should totally do it. I'm not trying to judge them. I'm just saying that it definitely looks different on camera than it does in person. And you're right, Audra, that TikTok doesn't do super well for tutorials because they're all going for shock value. And I don't think people are tuning in to TikTok for tutorials. I think that they're looking at it for trends. And I think that they're looking at it for, um, you know, quick information. And one thing I, I think we've talked about this before, Audra, is the connection that people have to people on TikTok versus the connection people have to people have to people on YouTube. Then when you only know someone just from flicking and watching very short content. You can't get the same connection to that person as you do on a YouTube channel. And I think that's why YouTube beauty will never die. No matter how big TikTok gets, I think people are looking for getting to know somebody a little bit better. Um, it's not just about that quick information for everyone. <coughs> for some people, excuse me, some people, yes, but not for everybody. Thank you for contributing that. I appreciate you. Yeah, Samantha says in the last five years, I've been wearing a lot more um, bands and five below tees. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Um, oh, Perky Perkins. Um, she tagged me in this on uh, Twitter, and I went and checked it out about Alamar Cosmetics, that Gabby from Alamar Cosmetics was in a similar situation to uh, what Blend Bunny went through. And uh, per uh uh, Perky told me about it. So uh, I can definitely look into it. I don't know if there will be a whole nother full video on it just because I feel like I kind of addressed it. And I don't know how much more there is to say, uh, especially if it's a very similar situation, but it, it just... It just really sucks. And the thing is, is making videos about it is going to bring awareness about it. But I don't think it's really going to change anything. That's going to be our legal system. And I think that's something that a lot of people brought up in the in that video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I did a video last week about Blend Bunny and their cease and desist and how they had to discontinue their pretty grunge palette. And uh, a lot a lot of people were commenting that it was, this is a little off topic, but a lot of people were commenting that maybe it was Hoda Beauty that sent the cease and desist. I can tell you I've seen the cease and desist. It was not Hoda Beauty. Um, I want to make sure that people are not accused. They didn't do anything. So, um, Huda Beauty was not the company that sent the cease and desist, but, um, but how unfair it is because she discontinued it a lot because going to court was going to cost her a lot of money and was it worth it? Was it worth it? But that video, um, you know, a lot of you watched it and really enjoyed it, but I don't know if I would be able to, um, do a full video on it. I think that it would be good to have that information in my back pocket if this happens to another brand to, you know, kind of add on Gabby's story to, to another story and just kind of, um, you know, so we can feel the prevalence of it because it's really messed up that there are, um, that frivolous lawsuits can be brought and the people can have done nothing wrong and have their trademarks and all of that. Um, 
and they still have to go to court to defend it. And it's one of the reasons why I abandoned my Mad Marshmallows trademark. Um, I abandoned it. I paid about $3,000 for the lawyer and for all the filings and everything. And I realized that I didn't need it. And it was, I, and that's one of the reasons because it's like you have first to use in commerce as a, as a rule. So in the United States, if you sell something under a certain name, you're informally protected trademark wise for that name. And if you can prove that you were the first to use it in commerce, it's kind of like when you, when you seal your whatever in an envelope and you mail it to yourself, you have like a protection there. That's another thing. Um, but I, I realized I didn't need it for what I was trying to do. And I was already $3,000 deep in it. Uh, and I'm really glad that I pulled out of that. But if I'd even gone all the way through and paid, you know, the rest of the $10,000 or whatever it was going to cost me to finish the process, it, it wouldn't have been worth it because then and if somebody really wanted the name Mad Marshmallows, they could take it. Or at least they could take me to court to try to take it, right? And I have to pay more money. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. But yes, that's something that I could probably find out more about. Um, but I, it's, it's not on the priority list at this moment. Uh, also with Kathleen Lights and Zoya, I'm assuming Gabby and Kathleen were talking a lot about that because they're friends um, about that because Kathleen went through that with renaming her uh, nail polishes with women's names that Zoya had done a cease and desist uh, against Kathleen. That was a whole nother thing. So, I mean, it's happening to so many people and there are so many situations that we just don't know about. Like we didn't know about Alamar until she shared it. Uh, that happened back in 2022, which is why Alamar didn't come out with a bunch of stuff in um, 2022 and just kind of started at the end of 2023. She's too busy fighting a frivolous lawsuit. It really sucks. I tried to find what the what the um, what the company was that sued her. I couldn't find it, but I'm sure if I asked her, she might tell me on the down low. Maybe I don't know. I don't have a connection to her, but I could. I have a connection to Kathleen, so maybe Kathleen would vouch for me. <laughs> Yes, Melissa, absolutely. Do what you on your face. It's yours. Yep, absolutely. Nightmare Bliss says, I've been doing full colorful gothy makeup for years, but took time off for the past several months, and now I don't know what I want to do. I'm rethinking my whole look, but that's the fun part. I love that attitude. I love that. It's because it's like, even though, like, it's, I can see in your profile picture the gorgeous look that you have there that's, you know, real edgy and like rocker and punk rock and all that. Um, you know, you don't have to stick with something forever. Like it can be just be a time. It can just be a time and then you can move on and it's up to you. I can tell you doing this makeup look was a heck of a lot faster than what I typically do. So I'm not hating doing less less eyeshadow right now um, on days that I don't really necessarily feel like the doing the art of it where I'm, it's more of a function. Because some days I really wanna do art and some days I wanna just do be functional. And today was a functional day. So I really enjoyed, um, you know, not doing a ton. So then you realize how much more time you have to spend doing other things. But some days I really want to do the art and I really want to play with color. And, you know, I think it just depends on the day. And it's up to each individual person, 100%. All right, I saw Donna Lee in here. Hi, Donna Lee. Oh, I'm way behind. Let me scroll all the way down because I am way behind. Yeah, um, anyone, uh, it's, a, it's a mermaid. Oh, I love that. Anyone know where I can find info on the Alamar suit on uh, on Gabby's TikTok, on the Alamar uh, Cosmetics TikTok is where I found it. Nice, Mella says, I'm Gen X and we're sugar and grunge. Very cool. And you know what? I I I feel, I felt really weird about it. But Maggie said she wanted to send me sugar and grunge. And I told her straight up, I was like, if you have a paying customer for this, please sell it to a paying customer. Like, I, I feel really weird taking this. She's like, oh, I have some set aside for friends and family. Like, you can have one of those. I'm like, okay. But I, I do feel really bad that she's going to send it to me. I, I kind of feel like, oh, look, that needs to go to a paying customer. Like, I want her to get the money. But, um, but yeah, she said she wanted to send it to me. So I'm going to get to try it. I've never tried Blend Bunny uh, makeup before. And I'm really excited to try her formula. 
Uh, it was definitely on my radar to buy a palette in the future. But like I was saying in my um, my video that I did where I was talking about the future of this channel, I'm just really not buying a lot of makeup right now. I have so much that I just want to enjoy. Like I want to play with the stuff I already have. I have so many toys. And it's like I want to play with the stuff, but if I keep getting new things and I don't get to play with what I already have, I don't get to really play with my Midsummer palette that I've been really loving lately um, if I just keep buying new things. So I wasn't, I wasn't going to buy anything from Sugar and Grunge right now, but it was on my radar to buy something in the future. Um, but I'm really thankful she's going to send that over. I just, I wasn't expecting it and I'm, I'm very, very thankful. So I'm going to get to try it too. Uh, and, and I'll let you know what I think. I'll let you know what I think. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa says, uh, at Lisa says, as a Gen X, I don't really follow makeup trends that much. I just do what works for me, and I love that for you. That's fantastic. Oh, by the way, I was calling it Blend Bunny Blend forever. Forever I've been calling it Blend Bunny Blend. It has not been Blend Bunny Blend, and I was wondering, I was like, I was even talking to Maggie about this. I was like, where the heck did I get that from? Because she even corrected me. She's like, it's called Blend Bunny, like in the nicest way possible. Where did I get Blend Bunny Blend from? I got it from Rouge Bunny Rouge. Do you guys remember Rouge Bunny Rouge? Uh, my uh, my friend, a long time ago, uh, Laura, who ran the channel Mrs. Lola Lynn, I remember she used to review their stuff all the time. And I literally thought it was the same company. I thought it was the same company. <sighs> so I was calling it Blend Bunny Blend. But it's not that. It's just Blend Bunny. It's a totally different company. Not related. Maggie never even heard of Rouge Bunny Rouge. <laughs> She's like, that is such a cute name. I was like, I know. I don't think they're in business anymore, though. It looks like they're, they went out like 2022, I think, which is really sad. Oh, nice, Audra. Audra says blends, which is one of the Blend Bunny palettes, is the palette, is the palette is all, blends is the palette and is one of my all-time favorite palettes on the planet. See, that is so awesome. See, now I, maybe I need to buy blends. Because she said that was like why, where she thought that I had gotten the name Blend Bunny Blend from, but it was from Rouge Bunny Rouge. This brain. This brain. All right, y'all. It is an hour in. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you to the moderators for doing the moderation thing. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, even though uh, whether you were here live or watch on the replay, I appreciate you. Uh, like I mentioned, we are going to have live chat next week at 10 a.m. Eastern time. The following week, the 31st is Easter Sunday. No live chat. The following week, is the 7th, April 7th, no live chat and no what's up in makeup because I will be uh, partying in <laughs> New Orleans with a bunch of creators most of that week. And then I'm flying back butt crack of dawn on the day of my nephew's bar mitzvah. So I'm going to my nephew's bar mitzvah dinner because I, I wanted to make sure I was back in time. He has the dinner that night. And then Phoenix's birthday is the next day. And it's also my nephew's bar mitzvah that day. So that is going to be a very, very busy day. So therefore, because of all of those things, I will not be doing a WhatsApp and makeup uh, for that week. And there will be no live chat because I will be dead. <laughs> I will be I will be sleeping in my bed. I will not want to uh, speak to anyone. I just will want to hibernate after that week. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, thank y'all so so much for being here. I appreciate you. Mad love. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. Bye.